Hey guys and welcome to this episode of Post Edit. Now in today's tutorial we are going to be talking about EQs or equalizers. And all EQs regardless of you know the specifications of what kind of EQs they are have the same basic function and that is to either boost or cut certain frequencies in your audio. And there's different types of EQs out there but the four main types that we're going to be talking about today are filters, you know, high pass, low pass or band filters parametric EQs, graphic EQs, or fixed variable EQs. So first things first, we are going to talk about low pass, high pass, and band pass filters. Now a low pass filter deals with the top end of the frequency range, so you have a set variable below which frequencies are passed. A high pass filter is pretty much the exact opposite, and you have a variable above which all frequencies are passed. So to give you an example, if I was to set my low pass filter at 250 hertz, any sound below that would not make it into the recording. And this is really good for you know clearing up your audio. If let's say you have a vocal track that you have a lot of low end you know noise or reverb in the background, you can use a low pass filter to cut that out. And the band pass filter is essentially just a combination of the two where you have two preset variables and you're only recording the frequencies between those two. And next up are what are called fixed frequency EQs. And what these are are essentially just a range of bandpass filters. You usually have about three of them, so you have your highs, your mids, and your lows. And what they allow you to do is either boost or cut certain preset frequencies within your range. So parametric EQs build on fixed frequency EQs in the sense that you still have your one, two, three, or even like up to probably about six bands that you can manipulate. However, with parametric EQs, you now have the ability to change the frequencies that you want to affect and how wide you want this band to be or how wide you want your Q to be. Uh, you still have you know, your lows, your mids, and your highs, or, but you might also have your mid lows, your mid highs, and you can just be much more specific in the kind of audio that you want to achieve. Now, last but not least, you have the graphic equalizers. And these are sort of the granddaddy of all EQs because they allow you the most precise amount of control that you have over your frequency range. You can literally draw the frequency response that you want on the EQ itself. You have a whole range of sliders, both for you know, your, left, your left and your right channel, and you can tweak each individual frequency pretty much as to how you want it to be. Now, the downside of these is that they tend to be pretty expensive because the more amount of control that you have, the more the price goes up. So now that you have a basic idea of you know, what the different types of EQs are, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about how they're used. And in live audio, an EQ is generally used to either eliminate feedback or to help tune the room. Each, uh, each venue is different, each room sounds different, and an EQ plays a large part in getting the audio to sound true to what it, it's supposed to sound like. Um, in a studio environment, you generally use an EQ to clean up your audio. Uh, one good general rule of thumb is don't try and add something that's not there. In fact, if anything, try and use your EQ to take out what you don't like instead. Uh, so you make your audio better not by you know, boosting this and boosting that, but by, if anything, taking things away. Take away, try and take away a hum that might be there, or a buzz, or just a certain kind of sound that you don't like. And then take it from there. If you keep boosting things, then you're much more likely to end up in a mess. Now, if you want a more in-depth look at how to EQ something, take a look at our advanced tutorials.